Hey there, today we're going to learn how to paint with watercolors. We are going to go over the absolute basics of watercolor. Maybe you just bought your first watercolor set and you've never used it before and you have no idea how it works, then this video is for you. All you need to get started is some watercolor paper, paints, two cups of water, a paper towel, and a paintbrush. First thing we're going to talk about is why it's important to have two cups of water. So one is for your dirty water to wash your brush with and the other one is to put into the paints. So we're going to do a little experiment and see what happens if you paint with the dirty water. So I'm dipping into some yellow here and you can see that because I'm using the dirty water to spread out the paint, I'm kind of getting like a duller yellow than what's on my watercolor pan. So now I'm going to wash off my brush in that dirty water, and this time I'm going to use the clean water to paint with. As you can see, I have a much brighter, clearer yellow, and that's why you always want to use the clean water to mix into the paint, and just the dirty water to wash your brush with. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to lighten your colors. So when you paint with other mediums, usually you mix white with whatever color you want to lighten. Now with watercolor, you do have white paint. Um, this watercolor pants that I bought here, they come with a little tube of this Chinese white paint. Now you can use it if you want to, but we're going to test it out and see what kind of different effects we get. Now the more standard way of lightening your colors in watercolor is by just mixing water into your paints. So the first thing we're going to do is just take some water from the clean cup, um, dip it into the watercolor pan to activate the color, and now I'm just going to go ahead and go over my little smiley face with just water and paint. Now for my second test here, I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of that Chinese white paint and now I'm going to mix it with some of my blue and we're going to see how it compares. So when we use the white paint, we do get more of a foggy look and the paint becomes less transparent. So there's definitely a time and place when to use the white paint and to get this chalky matte effect. Uh, it can be great for certain parts of your paintings, but you don't want to use the white paint for the entire painting. Your painting will look more chalky and it just won't really look like watercolor. So I'm going to show you next how to lighten your colors with water to get that nice, clear, crisp, transparent watercolor look. If you're just starting, you don't know what to do first, you can do this exercise right along with me. I just made five rectangles on my paper and I'm going to go from my darkest shade to my lightest shade. For the first one, I'm just going to add clean water to my paint to activate the paint. And then I'm going to go straight into that top rectangle to make my darkest color. One down, four to go. For this next one, I'm gonna dip my brush in the paint and bring some of that paint off to the side, to the lid. And here I'm just gonna add some extra clean water to that paint and that's gonna lighten it up a little bit. So these two boxes are actually looking exactly alike, which is a problem because it's supposed to get lighter as it goes down. So I'm going to grab my paper towel and all I'm going to do is just dab off a little bit of the extra paint. This technique is called lifting and it's great when you accidentally got a little heavy handed and it ended up a little too dark. You can just take a paper towel or a tissue or whatever you have and just blot um, some of that excess water and paint up off your paper. So for this next one, it's pretty simple. I'm just adding some more clean water to that paint water mixture and just making the color lighter as I go down. Yeah. 
So here's my finished transparency scale. It's a great exercise to practice all the different shades and values you can make with your watercolors. The next exercise we're gonna do is learning about wet on wet versus wet on dry. Wet on wet is done when you take your brush and you put water all over the paper or the spot you wanna paint first. And then you add the paint on top. Now this is really cool because you'll watch the pigment just flow effortlessly. And this is great when you're covering large areas and you can do a lot of different effects like blooms and ombres and gradients. And you can do some really, really cool abstract work with your wet on wet. So I'm just using my clean water to cover the spot where I want to practice my wet on wet. Wherever you put the water is where your paint is also going to flow to. Next, we're gonna try wet on dry. This is simply adding a wet brush to a dry piece of paper. This makes defined lines, which is great for outlines and detail work. If you're doing this exercise at home with me, which I hope you are, it's great practice, you can just draw whatever you want on this side of your paper. It can just be like little doodles or circles like what I'm doing, or you can write something. It's just to practice and to kind of get a feel for the different things you can do. The best thing is that you can combine wet on wet and wet on dry in your pictures. You can use them in different sections of your pictures or you can layer, which is gonna bring us to our next exercise. Watercolor is all about layering. Layers overlap each other like pieces of transparent glass. Second and third coats will darken up the color and are great for adding shadows and depth to your painting, even if you're working with a really limited color palette. So for this layering exercise, I'm just going to make three squares. And what I'm doing here is just painting all three squares the same color. Now I'm going to wait till it dries and I'm going to do a second coat on two of them. Once that second coat is dry, I'm just gonna do a third coat on the last square. Mm -hmm. 
So what we learned from this is that with each layer, our watercolor gets a little bit darker. Also, watercolor layers really great. So while you're working on a piece, maybe leave it alone for a bit and you can come back and add all kinds of details on top. Now I'm going to do some really quick examples just combining some of the things we learned in this video so you know how you can use it in your pictures. I'm going to make a really simple heart. For my reflection of my heart, I'm going to use that white of the paper. So all I did was leave a little space so that my heart has some reflection. Now I'm using a hair dryer to speed up the process, so I went ahead and dried the heart. And what I'm doing now is adding a second layer. And I'm gonna go around the outside to give it like a shadow to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. And I used a little bit of water just to blend out the edges. Now I did realize that that white part of the heart was standing out a lot, so I mixed paint with a little bit of water so that I got a really, really light pink and I filled it in. Now I'm gonna do the same thing one more time, but this time I'm gonna be adding details to a leaf. So I picked up a lime green color and I'm gonna go ahead and make my leaf. So when I did the heart, I just used one shade of pink for the whole thing. And now for the leaf, I'm gonna use that same lime green for the whole leaf. So the way that I add details is by letting the leaf dry and then adding details on top and they'll come out a little bit darker. As you can see, that same lime green color is showing up so much darker since it's my second layer. This is great news if you're working with a little watercolor palette where you only have six or 12 different kinds of paints. This means that you can do a whole lot with just a few colors. With watercolor, the possibilities are really endless. You can keep experimenting and having fun, layering, and doing all sorts of different things. So what I'm doing here is painting a wet on wet background. I'm gonna let it dry and I'm gonna draw a tree using wet on dry technique. So that's just a really, really simple example of what you can do. So have fun with it, experiment, try new things. Uh, there are so many different techniques out there that you can use. So keep researching, keep trying things out and figure out what works best for you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.